Welcome back on the AM show. We take another uh, look at a, a very prominent matter as we take a swipe at the latest consumer price index and the rate of inflation released by the Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, we do know now that inflation for the month of January is pegged at 53.6% and the CPI for January 2023 was 1656 relative to 1078 for the month of January in 2022. That means month-on-month -month inflation between December 2022 and January 2023 was 1.7. We discussed this with Foster Ajaho. He is head of the Price Statistics Unit of the Ghana Statistical Service. Mr. Ajaho, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, sir. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now, loud and clear. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Good morning, my brother. A very good morning to you. I'm sure when a lot of people hear of the consumer price index, consumer price inflation and all of that, it is pretty sketchy. It's up there for them. Uh, I would like to find out, how can you break this down to the basics for our viewers, uh, those who may not be technically inclined to understand what, what is the CPI all about? Let's start from there. So basically, the CPI and the inflation that we compute simply tells us how worthy or the value of the money we have in our pocket. And so if inflation is going up or if the CPI is going up and therefore inflation is going up, all that we're trying to say is that the value of the money, the value of the city we have in our pocket reduces, i.e., we will not be able to purchase the, the amount of commodities that we were purchasing from years back. That's basically what it means. Uh, let's talk about the measurement then. Uh, wh what then is the, I mean, the CPI? Wh wh what then is that? And how do you so go about how, how do you go about this measurement? So the CPI generally measures uh, average change in prices, you know, over a period of time. And the measurement normally is that we go through all the 16 regions of our country. We have some selected markets and some selected commodities. We have about 307 items in the basket. So every single month, at the beginning of the month, we go to the market and we ask about the prices of these commodities. And then we measure the change over time. And that's how can we compute inflation to determine the rate at which the prices are changing. Right. Let's talk about the, the CPI and the rate of inflation for 2023 vis-a-vis -vis 2022 by uh, this time of year. W what does the latest report show? So as you rightly said in your introduction, the CPI and the rate of inflation for the month of January, which is the beginning of the year 2023, has given up some hope. Indeed, the inflation has dropped from the 54.1% recorded in December last year to 53.6% January this year. So basically, we have seen at ease or a reverse of the upwards increment that we're having for the past 19 months or so. Mm. And what does this show? Inflation is slowing uh, as of this point. By how much is it slowing? And what does this mean compared to, let's say, late last year, uh, November, December, and maybe even the very start of the year? W what are the differences? In fact, the good news is that it's not just slow, uh, slowing. In fact, now it's even having a reverse. It's not even having a downward trend. And what it's telling us is that um, if we're able to maintain this, then we are restoring value to our local currency, our CD, and therefore our purchasing power will increase. We will then be able to afford more commodities compared to what we were doing the same time last year. So the CPI does not necessarily measure price uh, levels. You, you capture basically market readings. Uh, give us some scope on that. Okay, so as you rightly said, the CPI doesn't capture price level. I mean, when you say price level, it's a the value of the uh, price of the item on the market. But what the CPI does is to measure the change in those prices. And so we go to the market, we ask for the price all right. So if you're talking about Kobe, we come to you, how much is it? You say it's one city. Next month, we'll come to you and we ask, how much is this same Kobe? You probably will say it's one city, 50 pesos. 
And so the CPI will measure the change in the price between the one city of the previous month and the 1.5 cities of this month. And then we look at the rate as if it's, it's increasing, and that's what the inflation does. And so it's going up by maybe 10%, 15%, or 53.6%. How exhaustive is the approach you use? I know you use quite a bit of a basket when measuring the CPI. You have uh, prices collected from some 47,000 plus products from all the 16 regions, uh, 57 markets, and about 8,337 outlets. But how exhaustive is it? Is, is this truly reflective nationally of what is happening? My brother, you're right. It is very exhaustive and true reflective of what happens at the now. So it appears. Uh, mm. Go go ahead. We lost you briefly, but go ahead, Mr. Jaho. Sorry. And so we we have over fifty six markets. We go to the other service providers, schools and hospitals. So it's very reflective of what we do as a people in a country. All the aspects of our life are captured in yeah. Hello, Mr. Ajaho. It appears we're struggling with a connection to uh, Mr. Ajaho. It is either calls are coming through or the... The, the internet connection is not that, that stable. Uh, so, so, Mr. Ajaho, unfortunately, the, the connection has been leaving us hanging for a bit. If you could just backtrack a little, make your point, and then we move on to the next uh, question, please. Sorry for the discap. So, I was just saying that, indeed, the CPI is very representative. All the aspects of our life as a people are captured. We have all the 16 regions represented. We have almost all our markets, the major markets where we buy our commodities represented. We have other service providers like the hospitals, like the schools, and the uh, fuel stations all represented. So it is a true version of what we do in a country called Ghana. Let's look at a bit of a breakdown of uh, the items. Uh, but before we get into that, we know that last year, food inflation uh, coupled with fuel prices affecting transport really helped spike uh, the, the inflationary levels. Uh, when you look at food inflation specifically now, what does it look like? What are the differences between, let's say, last year at this time and this year? W what are the differences? Indeed, uh, food inflation this year, I mean, at least beginning from the middle part of last year to now, is a bit high. For example, this month we are talking about it being 61%. That's high. And the basket, the food aspect of the basket is the highest, over 43%. And so anytime we see food inflation going up, then we are scared. And so if we can do anything as a country, either we're going to help the farmers, we're going to provide more irrigation, we provide maybe a loan of fertilizer to them, to be able to produce more, that is a good thing to go. So this year, compared to last year, the even last two years, I think our food inflation is very high, and we need to work on it. And of course, that, that is a national security issue because food security is a national security uh, concern. But looking at the breakdown, you would notice that a, a lot of the items uh, that people would go for are rising in cost. Apart from transport, when you look at the month-on-month -month inflation, which has uh, gone down by 0.6% on the back of some of the falling prices of fuel products, and uh, we hear again that there will be some reductions uh, soon. And again, education, which also marginally fell by 0.5%. Uh, but everything else is on the increase, from uh, clothing and footwear to alcoholic beverages, tobacco and narcotics, to furnishings, to personal care, social protection, to restaurant and accommodation services. Everything seems to be on the high. How does that factor into the general inflationary rates then, which seems to have taken a bit, a, a bit of a dip? So, so, so the good news um, is that even though all these items, as you rightly mentioned, uh, seem to be having an increase, if you compare the, uh, the rate of increase between the past two months as compared to what happened same time last year, there is a slow. There is a reduction. 
That is how it can be recorded a reduction in the general inflation. And so even though, yes, they have gone up, but then they are going up at a slower rate. As when well, you do the year on year computation, then you have a relief. And therefore, your inflation begin to go down. Mm. Let's also look at the regional uh, dynamics. Of course, still, you would have areas like the greater Accra region with pretty high inflation. It's interesting because while the greater Accra region is pegged at 65 uh, uh, you know, percent, it's interesting to see Western North with 59 percent. The Ashanti region even does not have uh, you know, a rate that is that high, 44.7 percent. But look at Western North, 59 percent. And that I found a bit curious. You have the Savannah region as well with 55.1%, the OT region with 51%, Buno East with 51.8%. When you go up north, uh, more of 40% plus, uh, with only the Savannah region crossing 55%. Uh, how, how do you explain these dynamics? Because you would think that in certain areas of the country, in the northern belt, some things would be much less expensive, including food. Then you come to western north, another farming area, same. And, and, and of course, it's understandable in the greater Accra region because of the dynamics. But how do you explain the pattern that is showing up? My brother, your question is very good because it even contains the answer. Remember some few minutes ago, we just spoke about food inflation being high. And these regions that you mentioned, most of the things that they use are the food items. And so if you're having food items go up, then certainly these regions will be affected. And that's how can we are drawing the attention to the fact that we need to work on our food inflation. We need to make sure we support the production, the local production of this food item. Because as rightly mentioned, these are typically rural regions where they don't do much of the important items, they don't do much of the furnishing the house equipment, but they do much of the eating, much of the food items. So if you don't have enough of that, and the prices go up, then certainly their inflation will go up. So when you then look at our domestic inflation, uh, you look at our food inflation and all of these dynamics that you mentioned, which has culminated in the 53.6% year-on-year inflation for January, what should be our, our takeaways? For the ordinary person listening to us and uh, saying, well, this is what Mr. Ajaho is saying, but how do I manage this information in my own personal circumstances? What would you say? So I think that, um, you know, the last time I was with you in studio, we, our concern mainly was about the exchange rate and then the imported items. Yes, imported inflation is so high, 62.5%, but the good news is that it's coming now, it's slowing probably because of the stability in the forest market. But we should rather be concerned about what we eat. Because as you rightly said, it's a security issue, and we are not seeing relief from that side because now we are in the lean season. So between now and June, where we're not going to have the bumper harvest, then we should be able to do some cost casting, some, you know, economics, not going to uh, waste food. So we should manage what we have so that we don't get affected so much about the food inflation. And I think I'll reiterate something we discussed on the show the last time you were here. Inflation is relative in the sense that uh, while there may be the general metric of inflation, depending on what you choose to go for, your inflation, your personal inflation could be higher or lower. Uh, I, I know that there was a point when you gave access to people for them to come and key in what products they were getting, and for you to calculate their inflation for them. Is that a drive that you're still uh, doing? Or was yes, that just for yes, uh, the, the GSS week? No, 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 no. It's there. No, as Rex said, inflation may affect us differently, depending on our choice, our taste, and, you know, and what we consume. And so we still have that open. So it will guide people as to the choices they make. And so as we were just discussing, if food inflation is going that high, and probably no which items are recording higher inflation, then you'll be careful to know what do I have to substitute so I, I don't get affected worsely and I leave the, I mean, at least the minimal standard to survive. And so it's still available. It's on our website, and individuals can go and try to put in what they purchase, how much they purchase, and see how they have been affected by the general price level. Mr. Jaho, we are grateful for your time, but before you go, what would be your final words? So I think our appeal to all of us, I think for this year, let's see how we can help our farmers 
let's say how we can help our local people produce what we consume locally. Because as we say, we depend more on the food items. And if the food items have been increased arbitrarily or the price are going up, then all of us are in trouble. So it's going to give them loans, it's going to ensure irrigation increase, they increase acreage, and they get enough harvest, we'll all be good to go. Thank you so much. It's always good having you uh, join the conversation. Foster Ajaho is head of price statistics unit at the Ghana Statistical Service. Hopefully, you've learned a thing or two. Inflation is slowing down. Food inflation is still up there. In fact, it is shifting uh, the dynamic. But generally, uh, something to uh, maybe not necessarily celebrate, but something to at least have some joy about. Uh, that is the latest uh, consumer price index and inflation that we're discussing with Foster at Jaho. Do stay with us. You're still live on the AM show. A lot more coming your way. Later, don't you forget, we'll be interacting with you on these dynamics that we've been discussing. Stay.